about um, forecasting storms using my system, which was storm names, the very scientific. Uh, and I got an email a couple days later from none other than Mike Burrish saying, uh, I've got an idea for you. Why don't you come out to the First Alert Weather Center and, right. and hang out for a day? This is our radar data, and I've got it wide now. But we can go in much, much tighter, and I can actually operate this from the wall. So it uh, makes it interactive. Well, I'm Mike Burrish. I'm the, uh, the chief meteorologist for CBS 47, Fox 30. And we are in the First Alert Weather Center, which this hurricane season has become my new home. I, all I can remember is back in second grade, as a seven-year-old, uh, the teacher said, gosh, look, it's, it's snowing and the sun's out. So we all went run into the windows, and we're all glued to the windows. This is in Iowa, and we're all watching. And the weather in Iowa is crazy anyway. And that's the only thing I can remember that might have clicked to cause me to, to get this re ridiculous fascination with the weather. So it's been a lifelong passion. It really is a passion. Forecasting is very difficult. We would like to say we're right every single time. Obviously, we're not. We're going to be wrong sometimes, but there's no question that it has come a long ways, and especially that really the last 20 years, if you look at tornado statistics, for, examples, and then, for example, and the number of fatalities related to tornadoes are way, way down. Our, our ability to warn, to track tornadoes using Doppler radar is just it's phenomenal. We can see the circulation in the storm before it actually develops the tornado or as that tornado is developing and it allows us to, to track it and give advanced warning like we've never been able to do it before. Ike is a good example. Hurricane Ike is a hurricane that, that 50 years ago for sure and maybe as little as 25 or 30 years ago we'd have never known was there or it is as strong as it is. During the hurricane season it's, it's a hectic period and there's not a whole lot of sleep. It's an adrenaline rush and so you really don't think about it until the storm has moved on and you look back and you're like wow, you know, I haven't slept for four days, or, or wow, that was a heck of a storm, or we really did a good job forecasting it, or we really should have done this a little differently, which is a, a thing to do. We have post-storm uh, meetings. What could we do differently as a newsroom, as a weather office? What did, and I do a lot of personal, um, going back over my forecast, of course, to see what I might have missed or might have gotten right or what might help me next time. I'm in mode, two to seven mode this week. Hopefully in bed by 2 a.m. and always up by 7 a.m. So I'm shooting for five hours of sleep. Scored six today. It was huge. And, um, and so then I'm up on a, day, a week like this week when we've got Hannah and we've got Ike approaching. I'm updating our website just about right out of bed, right out of bed to the computer, updating the website, taking a look at things. And as the storm gets closer, I might be coming into the weather office, into the TV station in the morning versus the afternoon. Might be staying all night or most of the night. And so it is hectic. It's it, 04, 05, and 08 hurricane seasons are going to go down in history, and we're living them. I mean, we're seeing some of the most wild weather uh, that we're going to, we will see in our lifetimes. You know, people always remember when you're wrong and never remember when you're right, of course. And, it, and if you really were to pay attention, and this is something I've thought about for my blog, is actually keeping track of accuracy. I'm just trying to figure out a scale on it. But um, if, if you really were to track it, you'd see that there, more often than not, We've helped you plan your day. And that's how I judge my forecast. Have I ruined somebody's day with a bad forecast? Or did I make them, allow them to plan for whatever was expected?